What in the world <laughs> did I just read? This book is absurd. I decided to the end of the book. I love Isaiah. I don't know what the heck is going on, but the epilogue of this book is making me sob. I mean, you guys can see from the title below, but I will be attempting to read seven books in seven days. I don't know if this is even going to be possible. Basically, a book a day. The reason why I'm doing this is very simple. I have been really behind on my reading goal. My reading goal is 150 books, assuming I'll be reading more than 12 books a month. But last month, I was in a really bad reading slump and I only read seven books. And I figured since I'm in a really good position where I really like reading books right now, I'm gonna attempt to read seven books in seven days. Before July ends, we're gonna try and read seven books in seven days. I do have a list of books. We are going to be reading physical books and also Kindle books. Let's talk about the books on my Kindle first. The first one I have is Filthy Rich Vampire by Geneva Lee. This one here. The reason why I have this on here is because I originally saw Filthy Rich Fay on Amazon, wanted to buy it, but I realized that I've never read this author before, so I went to research on her, and I realized she released this book first, then Filthy Rich Fay, and I couldn't find Filthy Rich Fay on KU. But this book is on KU, so I decided to read Filthy Rich Vampire first and see if I like her writing, and if I do like it, I will buy Filthy Rich Fay. And that's why I have it on here, and I think it's going to be an easy, fun, fast read. And then we have the Fair Isle Trilogy by Tessandra Odette. Hopefully I'm saying the author's name correctly. The first book is To Carve a Fae Heart, I think, but I downloaded the whole trilogy as a book here. If I read the first book, I'm gonna count that as reading one book. Next I have Play Long by Liz Tumford. I really want to read this book. I really want to read this. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be reading it in this video and I wanted to get a physical copy but I'm going to wait until my birthday to actually buy the physical copy. I think it's Isaiah's book and it's the fourth book in the Windy City series. I don't own Mile High. I don't really like that book so I own the other two books. We have some physical books as well. I don't know if I'm going to get through every single one of them but here are the physical books I am looking and attempting to read. All of these are less than 350 pages. That is the goal to find books that are not very thick. If I read like a 600 page book, obviously I'm not gonna read it in one day. That's not going to happen. The first book I have is Assistant to the Villain by Hannah Nicole Mayer. This is only on here because I need to get my July TBR done. I am not the most excited about it, but I'm gonna read it. This is also on Kindle, by the way, it's on KU. So I have it on my Kindle. I'm probably gonna read it on my Kindle because the writing on here is hella small. And this book is about a girl who needs to find a job and she ends up working as an assistant to the villain. I've actually read a little bit. I've read 10 pages. I'll talk about my feelings about this book later. Next book I have is Summer Romance by Annabelle Monaghan. If I can, I do not want to read this book because I want to read this by the beach. I'm going to go to Bali in September, so I was thinking of bringing this to Bali, but if I have to, I will read this because pretty sure it's gonna be an easy read. I've heard a lot of people really liking this book. So, and I know this is about a single mom and she has kids, she recently got divorced. She decides to put her depressing feelings on hold and decides to find the summer fling, which is why it's called Summer Romance. And then I have Daughter of the Pirate King by Trisha Levenseller. I have a fantasy on here. This is only 310 pages. And so I decided to put it on here. And also the writing, it's really big, so I figured that this would be an easy and fun read as well. I don't know what this is about. This is one option I have. And the last one is The Match by Sarah Adams. This is less than 300 pages, so I feel like this will be the easiest read. Writing's not very small. I don't know what this is about as well. I recently bought this. I have no idea what this is about. Is it a meet cute or something? Those are my physical books. The first book I'm going to be reading is Ascendant to the Villain. I have been reading this on my Kindle instead of the physical copy. And my first impression is that after 10 pages, I feel like this book is more on the comedic side, sarcastic, out of pocket, because the things that the main female character does, questionable. I don't know why this is a book top favorite. I think I can see the appeal to some people, but to me, it's not really appealing the way these characters act. It's just borderline dumb. So I, I don't know how to feel about it, but I'm still reading it on my Kindle. On the Kindle, it's 4%. And page 19 on this book, it's page 10. I will be continuing my read of this and hopefully I'll get this on today because once again, our goal is to do a book a day. That is going to be it for this intro. Let us go on with this reading vlog and hop into our first book. I thought I would pop in just a little bit to quickly talk about my thoughts of this book because 
honestly i ended up having a really good time and i'm gonna make this update quick because i just wanted to talk about before i forget one of the things i want to say i'm at chapter eight right now according to the kindle i'm at 18 percent and i have four hours and 41 minutes left in this book i haven't been reading a lot by the way i am really enjoying this i think the reason why i like this so much is because i feel like both the main characters are sarcastic people and i love sarcastic people i myself am a very sarcastic person and i think that it's so fun to see somebody be so sarcastic and evie evie doesn't even pretend to be like other girls she knows that she thinks differently she knows that she acts in a different way than other people and she doesn't try to fit in or anything and i like that she's just unbothered by other people very inherently herself and i really like that her personality is so vibrant and so bright. She questions her own feelings sometimes, doubts herself in a sense where she knows she's supposed to be scared of the villain, but she doesn't feel like she fears him and she doesn't understand why. And I think her ability to question herself is really funny. I think it adds a comedic type of relief to her character. I also really like the villain and I didn't realize this, but there is dual POV in this book. We've gotten one POV of the villain and I really like his character so far. I think he's also really funny very grumpy but grumpy not in a way where he's mean to people more of he's just very quiet and brooding and he's supposed to act like a very evil person but in front of evie he doesn't know how to act and it's so cute and this book just doesn't take things seriously i think that's why it's so fun it's not high stakes there's nothing going on that is going to hurt anybody there are problems going on but it's just you know it's gonna be a fun time regardless it's not going to be painful when you're looking for a book like that you will enjoy it if you're looking for something that's more plot heavy that has world building then i think you're not gonna enjoy this book if you're looking for a high fantasy book this is not it i am highlighting on my kindle so i'm having fun it's the point where i'm highlighting stuff because there are some things in here that makes me laugh i'm gonna go now i'm gonna continue reading and hopefully i'll get this book done today i'm gonna try my best so i'm gonna continue reading and i'll see you guys soon <laughs> Excuse me? I don't know there was a second book coming out in 2024? Like, August 6th. I'm shocked. <laughs> I was not ready for that ending. That was such a cliffhanger ending. What in the world <laughs> did I just read? Feels like a fever dream of a book. I am officially done with Assistant to the Villain. I didn't guess the plot twist, which I felt a little bit dumb about. The things that happened, really out of pocket. I don't know how to explain how I feel about this book. Since I have the physical copy, I'm gonna put it up. I did really like Evie. I thought she was a really great feeling character. I liked that she was bright and sunshine, but she also understood that she had a dark side to her. And the villain, who is named Tristan by the way, I think he's amazing. I really like his character. He's grumpy but not mean. He has his own morals and he's really obsessed with Evie and I really like seeing how obsessed he is because there is his POV in this book and I love reading his POV. I thought his POV was one of my favorites in this book. I gotta admit, world building lacks a lot. There is not much going on. The magic was not explained well enough. I felt like the side characters were not very useful in this book. There were some characters I just didn't feel like were needed, especially the dragon in this book was really useless. I think the book is cute and I think it's a fun read, but I am not obsessed with it and I don't think that it's a book for everyone. I'm hanging on a 3.5 to a 3.75. I thought it was fun, which is why I'm rating it higher than a 3, but I don't think I can give it a 4. That is it for Assistant to the Villain. I did, I did enjoy my read, I gotta be honest. It was a really fun read. <laughs> really happy that i got it done i wasn't expecting to actually get it done right now it is 10 p.m so i am about to go to bed but i do want to pick up my next book i was thinking of picking up a book on my kindle these are our other options for a physical book i'm kind of feeling like the match just because i want another easy and fun rom-com read or should i pick up something on my kindle the main character of this book is also named evie oh uh, it's a single dad trope single dad has a daughter and a daughter struggles with epilepsy and wants a service dog and the female main character works with service dogs and also owns a service dog because she also has epilepsy 
It's the next morning. As you guys saw, I did end up reading on my Kindle instead of the match. I just wanted to lie down in bed and read in the dark and not really care too much about holding a physical book. This book is absurd. If you guys don't know, this book, you're following a filthy rich vampire. His name is Julian. These vampires, they live in modern world. They intermingle with the humans, but the humans don't know they exist. And Julian recently got woken up by his mom to get married. And he was in hibernation for like 40 years. Then he went to one of these balls, these parties where these marriage arrangements were held and he meets Thea who is a human. He thinks her blood is really sweet, thinks she's really pretty. They end up getting into a relationship. There's a whole rule where he is only supposed to get married to witches and they're called familiars. It's a thing. Let me tell you guys, I am right now 49% of this book. I read a lot yesterday. The first day they kiss, it might only be two days since they've met. I don't even know what to say. It's obviously insta-love. The plot of this doesn't make any sense. There's so many questions I have in regards to these vampires living amongst these humans. Him hibernating for 40 years, does nobody realize that he's not aging or something? Does he not appear in social settings? And I know these kind of logical questions don't make any sense with these kind of books, but I still need to ask them. I'm a very curious person. Obviously, I'm going to finish this, but I don't think it's going to be rated highly just because this whole plot is absurd. They've literally met for three days. I'm pretty sure it's three days. I finished Filthy Rich Vampire this afternoon and then I went on ahead to pick up the second book of the series because I didn't realize that it was a full-fledged four book series and the first book ended in a cliffhanger. So I decided to pick up the second book. I'm at 47%. And I decided to the end of the book because it's getting way too absurd and I just don't want to continue reading this series anymore. The things that happened didn't align and the problems didn't have any solutions and it felt like everything just went too easily. It gave what it needed to but it didn't satisfy any sort of emotional capacity in me. I decided to just give this a two star rating. <laughs> and we're gonna pick up the Match by Sarah Adams. I need an easy rom-com to to wash off whatever I just read. I don't think I'm the audience to read these kind of books anymore. I, I feel like I used to really like them, but now I just feel like it's just not for me anymore. So we're picking up the match. That is going to be it for this update. I will see you guys later. I finished it just now. I read up until halfway through yesterday night and then I continued on reading today and I'm so happy that I'm done with this book because I am on schedule. This is my third book done <laughs> and it's currently 3 p.m. so we have lots of time to pick up another book today. Even though I did enjoy the book and the writing and the whole plot line, it was very cliche. Everything was expected. However the characters acted was very predictable and I didn't feel like there was a climactic moment in this book but I did really like the kid in this book because the MC is a single dad and I really enjoyed her character although I do feel like she acts more like an adult for her age and I also felt like the two main characters in this book acted way too young adult like for their ages overall I enjoyed this book apparently it is a closed door no spice romance so if you guys enjoy that then i would recommend this i think i would give it like a 3.5 because i did have an enjoyable time and i did like the characters for what it's worth and i did like the kid character in here but it's not my favorite romance book i don't love it like i would love a five star book i'm gonna sit on this so i will think about it and yeah that is it for the match i need to pick up my next book now but i'm confused i don't want to read i'm gonna think about this first and then i will update you guys once i pick out my next book I wanted to give an update the whole day, but I was so busy 
I went to Pilates in the morning, came back home, had to leave again for a wedding dress fitting, came back home, brought my dog out on a walk, and then came back home and it was 4 p.m. and I am so tired. We had a very eventful day. I started the day out at 7 in the morning. I woke up at 7. I also have some reading updates. So I ended up starting this yesterday. You guys saw I ended up starting Summer Romance by Animal Monaghan. This is about a... I think I explained what this book is about. I'm at page 180 now. I'm going to continue on reading. I'm more than halfway through. I have about 130 pages, I think. You guys can hear my dog snoring. I apologize. He's sleeping right here. This book is really short, so I'm pretty sure I can get this done in like two hours. I think less than two hours. So I'm going to power through this right now. Get them before I eat dinner so that I can pick up another book tonight. Tomorrow is a Saturday, and if you guys have watched my reading vlogs for a while, you'll know that Saturdays are a difficult day for me because I go out on Saturdays, but this Saturday I'm actually pretty empty. I only have things to do for dinner So I'm gonna have tennis in the morning tomorrow and then I come back and I am empty until dinner time So I should be able to read another book during that time. So far thoughts about this book I have been having lots of fun I wasn't expecting too much about this book because it's my first animal monogam book and second from the back of the book I thought it was just gonna be like a no plot just vibes, but there is plot in this book and the MMC Ethan completely surprised me. I feel like you have to go into this a bit blind. I'm not gonna tell you guys what it is about, but I thought it was fun. Like the little reveal was really fun. So I really liked it and I had a lot of fun reading this. The writing is really simple. I really like Ellie. I think the way she acts is very relatable and I am having fun reading about her character and seeing how she's gonna grow from this. Also really like Ethan, who's the MMC. I enjoy his character a lot more than Ali just because of the things that he went through and also what he's going through right now. I love him as a character so much, but I'm excited to see what's gonna happen now. I do feel like this book is more of a life story instead of a romance book. I think the romance is a side plot in this book. There's lots of other plots surrounding Allie's life. But I feel like it's more of a book about her instead of a romance book. I'm gonna read this. I'm gonna power through and then I'll give you guys more updates. Okay, I'm gonna make this update really quick because my dog is itching to play. But I feel like I need to give an update before I forget my thoughts on this book so that's why i am popping in here just really quickly to say i got some romance done i didn't finish it before dinner but i still finish it anyway <laughs> right now it is 7 30 Ta-da! it's not so bad so i think i got it done at a reasonable time and yeah i got this done i love the ending I loved how this ended this is the perfect ending for me in a book this ended so good and I love the relationship Ali has with Ethan. So healthy, so respectful, so filled with mutual love for each other. And I really enjoyed seeing their growth and their progress throughout their relationship. I love this ending. This ending is spectacular, especially how this book incorporated Ali's three kids. I was thinking that it was going to be difficult to incorporate three kids into a book and make it seem like a substantial part of the plot. But this book did it so well and I really like seeing all of the kids in here and I think that there are parts of this book, even though you're not a single mom and you cannot really relate to Ali, there are some parts of this book where she talks about her kids that I feel is 100% relatable and I enjoyed those so much. Essentially, it was so good. I had a lot of fun reading this. I felt like the beginning is a little bit slow, but overall, the pacing of this book was amazing and the ending, ending was top notch. I loved the ending, I loved how this ended. I love how they got through their problem. Anyway, I did enjoy this. Rating, I think I'm gonna sit on this for a bit. I'm not, I'm not too sure what I'm gonna rate it yet. Definitely about four stars for sure. And now we're gonna pick up our next book and I'm thinking of picking up Daughter of the Pirate King by Trisha Levenseller, but I am a little bit iffy about it. So I'm gonna have this book and also play along by Liz Tumford, which is on my Kindle, available to read. I might pick this one up first, but if I'm looking to read a Kindle book instead, I'm gonna pick that book up at night. Right now, I am going to go and entertain my dog. And then once I am winding down, I'll probably pick up this book. Yeah, that is my update. Had so much fun with Summer Romance. I'm so happy I read it. I'm going to go now. <laughs> I've been 
reading Daughter of the Pirate King by Trisha Levenseller. And I am now at page 140. This is chapter 10. I'm almost in the middle of this book. It's only like a 300 page book. So it's really quick to read those 140 pages. But I do have an update before I head to bed because I want to go to sleep. I'm really tired today. So in this book, you're following Alosa, who is the daughter of the Pirate King of this world. She pretends to get abducted by this one pirate because she wants to go to their ship and steal a map. She then meets Ridden. Ryden. R-I-D-E-N. Do not call him. I'll call him Raiden. She meets Raiden, who is the first mate of the ship, not the captain. And as Alosa searches for this map and this ship, she starts falling for Raiden. And Raiden also starts falling for Alosa. First off, first off, I love a good pirate book. It's lots of risk taking, so I would expect my characters to be spunky and witty and strong. And I feel like in the beginning, Alosa was portrayed to be that kind of character. But slowly, she started to get on my nerves. The romance is really overpowering the whole fantasy world we're living in. Because at this point, I don't know anything about Raiden. I literally do not know what his usage is. And the way he's treating Alosa, I just can't, I can't figure it out. I'm supposed to feel enemies to lovers in this, but I'm not. There's this one romantic scene in this book, and I just didn't know where that came from, because it came out of nowhere. When? That they start liking each other there were no feelings involved and suddenly something happened i can't grasp my head around it so i'm not feeling excited to continue on with the story because there's nothing pushing me forward to continue with the story but am i gonna read on i'm gonna read on i'm not gonna give up on this those are my thoughts on this book and i think i'm gonna retire for the day i'm gonna pick up my kindle and we're probably gonna read play along by liz humford i have heard amazing things about that book it's been a long day today it is currently saturday this is my first update of the day and it is to say that i have officially finished reading daughter of the pirate king by trisha levenseller i had lunch plans just now so i had tennis i came back showered and i went to lunch and i just came back i will have to say all of my feelings for this book and my first update still stands true i still think that it is a little bit weird pacing wise the world building is not built very well i just felt like the romance was a little bit weird i didn't really like the characters i found myself skimming it sometimes and so i think i'm gonna rate this book like a two stars i'll probably still pick up the second book though because the ending is a semi cliffhanger i have bought the second book thankfully it is a short book so i think reading it is not that difficult <laughs> Now that we're done with that, I'm gonna pick up Play Along by Liz Tomford. I haven't picked that up yet at all. I am so tired. I'm gonna take a nap for a bit and then we're gonna start Play Along and then we'll go from there. <sighs> Guys. I am only at the prologue. Is this the prologue or is this even the first chapter? Oh, it's the prologue. Okay, I'm at the prologue where I think it says three years ago or something. I am already feeling so giddy. I just keep smiling and laughing <laughs> at the conversation they have. Oh my gosh. I feel like I'm gonna like this. I feel like I'm gonna be obsessed. I, I love Isaiah. I'm, I'm going too crazy, but I am so excited to continue reading this <laughs> so cute but yeah okay i'm gonna let you guys go because i'm gonna continue reading and yeah i'm so excited to continue going on but the epilogue the epilogue of this book is making me sob I'm like crying tears <laughs> this is embarrassing this is embarrassing <laughs> every single time i read a book of this series i always feel like i really enjoyed this book more than the previous one i read right move loved it so much i read caught up and i thought i loved it more than the right move and now I'm reading Play Along and I feel like I love Play Along more than Caught Up. This was so good. I don't even know how to explain why I enjoyed this so much. Isaiah. Isaiah is my favorite MMC in this whole series. He was so bright. He was so cheerful. He was so sweet. And he was so obsessed. He was so freaking obsessed. Can we please? Can we please? Like, can we? 
the way he's so obsessed with her. I love the relationship they had. I didn't feel like Kennedy was stringing him along. She was dealing with her own issues and I felt like it made sense for her to feel a certain way because of her upbringing and obviously Isaiah's upbringing as well and his relationship with his brother Kai who is the main character of the book Caught Up which I absolutely loved and seeing Max and Miller. This book, I think I liked it so much more because of the old characters you see in this book and I loved seeing Ryan and Indy as well from Right Move. I love this whole Bound family and I am obsessed with this series now. I feel like Liz Tomford is writing characters that I like even more and more in this series. I thought I really liked Indy and I thought I really liked Miller and now I love Kennedy. She's so strong. She doesn't take no crap from people and she stands up for herself. It was so endearing to see her grow from that and to see her get what she really wanted and to see her fight for what she deserves to get. I cried a lot, not because of the romance scenes, but mostly a lot of the scenes of Isaiah with Kai. Kennedy standing up for herself and getting what she deserves and just being a girl boss. I absolutely love their relationship. I love how Isaiah is obsessed with her, but I also more so love the way Kennedy shows how much she really likes Isaiah as well. Like throughout the story, even the third act conflict didn't give me annoying vibes. I love the conflict. I thought it was dealt with very, very well. I liked it. I just love seeing Isaiah pine over her and the tension they had. I don't even know what to rate this, but I'm just letting you guys know. High rating. This was so good. I loved it. I'm excited for Rio's book. Rio is going to be a hockey romance. I don't know who his counterpart will be, but excited to see because it's going to be the last book of the series and I'm excited but also scared, but also really happy I read this. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we got our sixth book down. I'm going to pick up my last book. I'm a little bit conflicted. I don't know if I want to pick up something on my physical TBR or if I want to pick up a Kindle book. I actually want to read a novella. I want to read Six Scorched Roses by Carissa Broadbent, which is actually the novella following The Serpent and the Wings of Night. And I have read that duology so I know reading this novella might be useless because I do know how this character plays into the second book of that series. But I have heard great things about people reading it and I know I haven't read it so I am interested in getting into it regardless. Yeah, I'm gonna update you guys when I pick up a book but right now I wanna rest so I'm gonna do that and then I will update you guys if I have more updates. <laughs> I'm actually here today to end the vlog because we have officially read seven books in seven days. I technically read seven books in six days, but we're just going to name it seven books in seven days. So yesterday I read two books. I finished Play Along by Liz Humphrey in the morning. And then I picked up Six Scorched Roses by Carissa Broadbent, which is the novella in the Crowns of Nyexa series. I decided to pick it up on a whim because I've heard great things about people reading that book. I finished it yesterday night. It was a very short read. It took me, I think, two and a half hours to finish. Yeah, I finished it. Overall, I liked it, but I think I didn't enjoy it as much as The Supper in the Wings of Night, which is pretty obvious. I think I have come to the realization that novellas are not my favorites. I felt like the romance portion of the book was too quick for me. It didn't feel very natural, but I did like the relationship they had. I enjoyed the plot of this novella. I really like the fantasy world that we're put into. Just getting to know more about this world. So I really like that, but the romance felt a little bit too quick for me. And we're going to end this vlog here. And I'm going to talk about all of the books I read in this vlog. So we read four physical books and three Kindle books. I technically read four Kindle books, but I own the physical book of Assistant to the Villain. So I don't remember what book I read first. I'm not gonna lie, I feel a little bit dumb. Assistant to the Villain by Hannah Nicole Mirror is my first book. And I decided to rate this book a 3.75 stars. Overall, I just had fun with the book. It was really funny. It just wasn't a four stars because of the world building. And also the climax of this book just wasn't climactic enough for me. And then I read Filthy Rich Vampires, I think, which is on my Kindle. I rated this a 1.5. Next book I read is The Match by Sarah Adams. I decided to rate this book a 3.5 stars. It was a cute, fun and easy read, but it wasn't anything extraordinary and it just didn't give me lots of emotions reading the book. It's the type of book where I feel like if you enjoy an easy rom-com, you will enjoy this book. I read Summer Romance next, I think. Summer Romance by Animal Modigan. I had so much fun with this book. 
I love this book. I decided to rate this a 4.5 stars. I really liked it. I felt like the beginning portion of this book was really slow, but overall, I enjoyed the whole story. I love that this book is about Allie Morris instead of the romance. I feel like the romance is just there to help aid Allie's growth in her life. I like the emotions brought out in this book, and I also really enjoyed all of the characters in this book. I love the side characters. I love the kids. So yeah, I enjoyed it so much. I'm gonna pick up more of her books. I am excited to read more of her books. Really simple, but really heart-wrenching. Really good. Then I picked up Daughter of the Pirate King by Treasure Levin Seller. It ended up being a two-star read. There's a lot of things about this book I didn't like, but overall, I think the writing was actually not bad. I just felt like the plot and the pacing lacked a lot, and I'm hoping to pick up a second book, so I'm giving it two stars. And then I read another Kindle Unlimited book. I read Play Along by Liz Tumford. I'm gonna buy that physical copy, and I'm gonna annotate the heck out of that book because this is my five-star read of the month of July. I think about that book and it just gives me chills and it was so beautiful. I loved Isaiah. Oh my gosh, Isaiah is such an obsessed man and I love him to bits and I love Kennedy. I love how strong she is. Unexpectedly five stars because I wasn't expecting this book to be a five stars but I loved it so that's a five star read. And obviously last book I read, To Scorched Roses, I rated a 3.5 and that is going to be it for this reading vlog. I am so happy it's a success and I'm so happy I did it because I really wanted to get some of these books read and I just wanted to reach my reading goal ASAP. We're way off schedule so I'm happy that this reading vlog actually succeeded. If you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. It will mean a lot to me and obviously if you guys have read any of these books let me know in the comments down below. Let us talk about it because I've read so many good books in this reading vlog actually and I'm happy about them. Thank you for watching and hopefully you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!